Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the Schifflera plant. It's kind of a tongue twister, Schifflera. I swear, that's the name of it. I have the thing right here. Can you see that? Schifflera. <laughs> I got this about three years ago because I really like the way the leaves are segmented. I don't know if you can see that. Each stem is going to grow one leaf, and one leaf has about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different segments. And the bigger it gets, sometimes I'll have up to 13 segments. I've seen, I've read somewhere that these plants grow about 13 feet tall when they're outside in those subtropical climates. I've never been, so I've never seen it that tall. The biggest I've seen it is like in a restaurant. It's about six feet tall was the biggest I saw. It was, it was huge. It was almost like it was going to get up and start walking around. It was insane, but it was beautiful. Now, I didn't know this when I bought the plant. This plant is a natural air detoxifier and an air freshener, which means just the same way it takes our breath and it absorbs it and then it emits oxygen like trees do, it's going to absorb VOCs, that's volatile organic compounds. <laughs> I had to read that because, you know, I didn't know that when I first bought it. I did some research recently. Um, there are some things like... Um, benzenine and formaldehyde it can absorb and it's actually pretty proficient at that as well as other things that are linked to asthma, nausea, respiratory illnesses, and cancer. I'll put the website that I found this information on in the description so you can read it for yourself. I'm not just making this up. I think it's important to have plants that help to clean your air because it's not like you know we can just spray some for breeze or you know wax on wax off things. You know, it, our quality of life is affected directly by our surroundings. So this plant, bamboo, pothos, uh, what other plants? Ficus, spider plants, royal, Japanese royal ferns. English ivies. Aloe vera, snake plants, peace lilies, purple waffles. All of these plants can be very helpful at cleaning your air. Basically, the way I take care of this plant is during the winter or the dormant season, I don't fertilize it at all because it's not growing. So what does it need energy for? It'll get everything it needs from the sun. While we are in the growing season, I fertilize it with a with a diluted fertilizer just a regular standard all-purpose um, with the with the balance NPK maybe every third time I water it now depending on the size of the pot the size of the plant will make it will decide how often you should be watering it. If it's in a small pot and it's a small plant, you obviously don't need to water it that much. But if it's a large plant in a large pot, um, depending on how dry and, or humid your area is or inside your house, will decide where how often you should water it. For my plant, I water it maybe and I completely drench it once every two weeks in the growing season because the way I do the way I mix my soils with wood chips and compost and um, perlite it's pretty airy and loose you know so I'm able to water it more often these I've learned that these plants thrive on really bright indirect light so since these plants can get so big I kind of stunt the growth a little bit. I don't put it too close to the window because it's going to just shoot off and sprout and grow in all different directions. And uh, you already know about my pothos that was taking over my house, so I don't need this one doing that too. Um, I take care of the roots properly, but I keep it um, in a little bit less than indirect sunlight, which will make it grow a little bit more slowly. If you want it to grow fast, and obviously, put it right there next to the window without getting direct light. That means that when the sun's shining, if you, you know, see sunlight on the leaf, that's direct light and that will burn these leaves. 
Um, there are some plants, I don't know, again, depending on where you live, how close to the equator, how strong your, your sun rays are, will decide whether, you know, that's more accurate for you or not. Oh, this is ice cream. He came to say hello. Now, one thing about these plants is this, it, it will excrete a sap not dripping all over your floor, nothing crazy, but um, when a plant's happy and it's growing and you're watering it, sometimes it'll have a little bit of sap coming out, like a little bead of what looks like um, like a clear corn syrupy stuff. That can cause skin irritation in people who have delicate skin. So if you're going to be pruning it or anything, then you'll want to wear gloves so that you don't get an itchy owie. For pets, they should not be allowed to nibble or gnaw on this because that can cause them nausea and diarrhea, and that's pretty gross. No one wants to wake up with a poopy, pukey animal. For pruning, I've never pruned this one. Um, like I said, because I stunt the growth, I don't put it too close to the light. Um, but for pruning, you can see that it grows in segments, not in segments, but you can just um, take a part of it and cut it right at the stem. If Let me see if I can show you. If you can notice, there are little air roots in there. Can you see that little root? It's a little air root. If you trim it with a couple of little air roots, you can plop that little piece in the water and it will make a whole new plant. But if you just want to trim it, you could just cut it in between where the leaf nodes are growing, as low, as low down as you want to. You can trim it in between where the leaf nodes are growing about as low down as you want to. There. As low down as you want to and um, it'll grow just fine. Plants actually thrive and they become more bushy when you prune them. Some pests that you can encounter with these plants are aphids, spider mites, mealybugs, thrips. Um, usually when you first buy a plant, those are things you should look out for, but once you've had it and it's established in your house, it's not really anything you need to worry about unless you've been keeping your plant outdoors, in which case you should monitor it and check it every day. Because if you can catch these pests before they spread and replicate and you know take over your plant, then it won't be difficult to control them. Um, if you do end up getting an infestation, you'll either, oftentimes, spraying your plant down with soap and water can alleviate the issue but if not you might need to get neem oil you can find that on Amazon or go to your local hardware store and a lot of those places they have um, insecticides and since you're not going to be eating it you don't have to worry about whether it's organic or not unless you love your plants so much and you just want to give them the best like I said, it's really good for your air quality, which is very important. I've read that, that indoor air pollutants are the top five indoor risks for public health. Now, I don't know who came up with that list. Uh, I mean, they could say farts are part of that too, but who knows? We do need air to breathe, so it's good to have, <laughs> it's good to have clean air. If you have any other questions about this plant, Leave a message in the comment box below and I will answer it to the best of my ability. And if you have any requests for plants, I'll do my best to find them and give you all the information I know about them. If this video was helpful for you, thumbs up and subscribe.